Hey guys, and welcome to the long-awaited next episode of Scrabble Guest to Elo, where as always I'll be looking at several games of Scrabble played between two anonymous players, and based only on their plays, trying to guess their skill levels. We have, as usual, a battle between our two favorite players, Player 1 and Player 2, and Player 1 will be first this game. We only have partial racks it looks like for Player 1, I assume they're going to open with Waned, and they do. Player 2 is the annotator, so we'll have full racks for Player 2, a little bit constant heavy, could maybe see something like Accept through the A and Waned. They go with Clep through the E and Waned, which is very reasonable, it's a bit of a point sacrifice, but it keeps REC, which is a very strong leave. Probably not what I would have done, but I don't mind it. Player 1's going to get rid of the Q. Player two, uh, choosier doesn't work. I don't think there are any playable bingos here. Just OI comes down. That's fine. 26 points. I would have probably gone with choir in that same spot uh, if we go back to this play. It's a lot more points. It's like 20 more points. But OI isn't terrible. It keeps a really good leave. Player one plays pound for 12 from the P. Okay. I mean, I might have maybe tried to do something next to the O and OI, but it's hard to know not knowing what player one had. And player two has some bingos here. Roach, is that going to play though? Anchored through the end will play. I don't know if they have anything else. And they find it. Nice job. Player two gets a bingo down. Player one probably going to play Fidge. And player two, interesting. Well, they have the Y hook for Y clept. They could play Joy and Y clept, setting up their S really nicely there. That looks like a pretty solid play. Could also see something at L1 next to the O and OI. A lot of options here. And they go with Joy there. I would have definitely gone with Joy and Y clipped because that sets up your S and also keeps the X for Ox and Ticks on the next turn in that spot. So that would have definitely been a better play, but tricky to see. Player one plays... Oh, Fidgeter, that's a really nice play. Not like a obscure word or anything, but it's always tough to see those extensions. So nice play there by player one. Player two draws poorly. Twixt, maybe, I guess, to the T and Fidgeter. That looks reasonable, keeping SST. There's not a whole lot of options with this many consonants. Ritz is fine. That keeps XST. I don't mind that. I'd probably have gone with Twixt, just because you do have the Pounds hook, which is really good for bingoing, but nothing wrong with that either. Player 1 has uncarved through the C, and... Oh, that's probably like a fake rack or something. Yeah, because they play... OG from a rack that doesn't contain OG. So we're going to ignore that and assume that was an annotation error. Kind of weird, but it happens sometimes. Player 2 probably just Vox through the O and Jog, I would assume. Yeah, that's a pretty straightforward looking play. Player 1, Revenual with an L, not going to work. I mean, I don't even know if this is a real rack, so let's see. Yeah, like I, th I think their racks are just off now. It's kind of weird. They play Blet from a rack that doesn't contain a B, so hard to know what they really had. Player 2... Uh, I don't see anything great. You're up a bit here. Blood is kind of a strange play because it blocks a lot of bingo lines for player one and they're down. Could just play Luck, especially because OK wasn't good at the time of this game. It's worth mentioning, guys, this game is TWL06, which is quite a bit older than the lexicon we're using now. So like OK and EW and several other twos were not valid. So Luck through the C and Cleft is a pretty defensive play. Let's see what they do. OK, Hulk, a bit aggressive, but you do have an S. So I don't, uh, I don't mind it. Yeah, this score, yeah, I mean, I think it's fine. Luck is probably a little bit safer at this score, but it is a lot more points to play Hulk, so I don't mind it. Uh, player 1 plays Vub in the top right, and player 2 uh, does not draw a bingo, I don't think. What are they, they exchanged? Huh, I don't know. I'm not sure I buy that they actually exchanged. Yeah, there's some weird stuff going on with the annotation here, guys. Um, player 1... Manures and Hulks, presumably? Yeah, like, I don't know what's happening. They play Ice, but they didn't have an I. So this is this is very weird. Very, very weird. Okay. Uh, player 2, what do they do? I, I don't even know what their rag actually is. Is this accurate? If it's accurate, yeah, SH is kind of a strange-looking play to me, because it sets up an A hook you don't have. Uh, yeah, that just doesn't feel right. I would just as soon leave that open and play something like O on the bottom right with Sot and He probably to at least block the R and keep stirs on your rack. It just seems much better equity-wise. Yeah, SH is kind of a strange-looking play to me. But okay, player 1 now plays If for 5. Player 2 has no bingos in NWL. Nothing to the R either. Rotaries doesn't fit, so we're probably going to see an O-Fish somewhere. Yep, Oxen want to go. It seems reasonable. Player 1, this is their rack. Still doesn't have a bingo. 
It's not their act because they have a Z, okay. Uh, player two with Arius now with Hulks, I would assume will come down. Air, eh. I don't know, really? I mean, you're going up 110. It's a couple more points with Hulks and you don't open the triple triple. It's got to be better with Hulks. Or actually, you know what they should have done? They should have, it's a little tricky to see. They should have played a seriated to the D and pound on the 11 row, making AE. That's definitely what they should have done. It's by far the safest, and its score is just about the same. Yeah, so definitely uh, a bit of a strategical error here by player two. But okay. Uh, player two now takes a 110 point lead. Player one plays heal for 12. Yeah, that can't be right. I mean, you have to, at this point, like, you're just blocking and you're going down 100 points. Like, you have to open the board somehow and keep that open. You have to take chances. And now Opaline's through the eye in Arius, and that should be GG. Ooh, it's missed. Okay, interesting. Yeah, Espanola and Nopales didn't play, I don't think. But, uh, okay. So, bingo miss there by player two, but they probably still have enough to win quite easily. Player one just plays Ya. Yeah. Now, player two with a bit of consonant trouble. What do they play? Biped? Yep, nice play. I like that a lot. Now, player one is going to bingo with... I guess, like, Firemen, maybe? With Rhea? Let's see if this is actually the wreck. Okay, Firemen. Yep, nice play. And wait a second, guys. This is not over, because now player two has no vowels. And the unseen pool here... Let's see. It's the white tile. We've got A-A-I-L-N-O-R, two U's in a blank. So there is a blank, but it's not a great pool. Tough call here if you're player two. Do you block the F and block stuff? Well, I don't think Free Ulano was good at this time. I think that was a later addition. Do you block stuff through the F? You probably have to block stuff on the left, right? With Like next to the N and Fireman? But how do you do that? Do you play Men for five? Then your opponent could still bingo from the M. Maybe Neg. Yeah, the N is kind of annoying to bingo through. I think probably Neg for four is best here. I don't know. It's a very dicey position. I think I would play Neg. I mean, I feel like you have to try to block the left. Like, he's way more likely to bingo there than through the F. Okay, yeah, Jen, that's reasonable too. Okay. Yeah, that seems fine. Now, player one, if this is their rag, I mean, I assume they're going to fish. Let's see, they play off an A? Huh, why wouldn't you play off a U if you have two U's? It's interesting. Um, hmm. Yeah, I feel like, well, wouldn't you go for a Guardian maybe with an R draw playing off a U? We'll see. Maybe they have some other idea in mind. Okay, so now... Oh! Wait a minute. Player 1 now has A-I-N-R-U-U blank. Instead of Guardian, they have Augering. Wow. Guys, that will play with three overlaps. A-E with the blank E and Firemen. Um and Un and Augering. A-U-G-U-R-I-N-G will play there. Wow. How about from the F? I really don't think there's anything. Almost like Funiculi or Fusarium, but not quite. So player two now just needs to basically play anything on the left, which shouldn't be too hard because they have a vowel. Like Mole to the E in area should win. Even just Mog keeping five constants. You just have to block the G. And now do they? Uh-oh. Is player one going to find it? Wow! Incredible. And player one wins 431 to 400 on a triple overlap double U out bingo. Wow. What a game. I don't even know what to think here, guys. Like, I mean, player one, we, we just don't even know what they had for most of their turns. The annotation was a bit off, unfortunately. Player two, I mean, I feel like played fairly well in the beginning. But, yeah, Arius was bad. Definitely either Arius and Hulks or Syriata to the D and Pound would have been considerably better. And then, obviously, the miss of Opalines with Azo was extremely costly. That's a fairly high prop bingo. So I, I think player two is pretty strong, but not like definitely not like a top player. There's also like just Joy and Wyclef missing that. There there were a lot of a number of smallish mistakes and a couple larger mistakes. But overall it was still a pretty good game for player two. I'm gonna say player two is probably like mm, I'm getting like fifteen to sixteen hundred impressions. But I 
could be wrong. I doubt they're much higher than that. It could be a bit lower. I mean, they could be a little lower, because there weren't any, like, really crazy plays that they made. Yeah, I'll, I'll say 15, low 1500s for player 2. I'll go 1520 for player 2. I, I have no idea, guys, about player 1. Like, player 1, I mean, there were no extremely obvious mistakes, but I just didn't really have racks for them. The, this fish at the end was just insane, though. If they, if that's really what they had and they were going for auguring and that they saw that, like, that's insane. Like, that's high-level expert stuff there to see that and go for it. So, I mean, I just have to base everything off of that because I have nothing else. So, I don't know. I'm going to say player one is like a 1700 and player two is like a 1520. But let's see. That's my final answer. And... What? Player one is an 1111. So, wow. Player two, I was actually pretty close. I said 1520, they were 1420. But I figured if anything, I probably missed high on player two. Player one is an 1100. Wow. That's incredible that an 1100 fished off an A there, keeping the two U's and saw that possibility. Wow. What a play. What a win for player one. That was an incredible game. Absolutely awesome way to start off this episode. Wow, great stuff. And I was off by about 600 points on player one's ELO. Really, really, uh, wow, crazy stuff. Okay, let's go to one more. And our new game is going to be, let's see, TWL15. So a little bit more recent, but still not the most recent update to the dictionary. Player one, a few options here. Uh, they could play cred, but probably the stronger move is to trade and keep like DERS. I feel like most top players would trade here. See what they do. They trade C, D. Okay, that's fine. I would have probably traded one more consonant, but nothing wrong with that. And I feel like that already, to me, indicates a fairly strong player, because a lot of weaker players would probably play Cred over there. Player 2 is going to play Unai and Dumped Vowels. And player 1 should bingo with Snarfed. Uh, let's see. Yep, nice overlap. That's where I was hoping they would bingo. Player 2 is going to play Mog, I guess. Yeah, we're not going to have... Oh, Smog. Okay, we're not going to have full racks for player 2. Player 1 has the Q. Can they get rid of it? Uh, not easily. So, should they trade? Probably not. They can score enough. I mean, just not, and he is probably worth it. I hate keeping the Q like that, but let's see. Yeah, I mean, it's still 30 points. Like, you have enough of a chance at drawing an eye or something. Like, it's still worth it. You can always trade next turn. So, it's not a great looking play, but it's fine. Player 2 plays cool. Okay, very, very aggressive. I like it, though. So, they probably have an S. And they're down 70 points. Like, that's exactly the kind of play you need to make when you're down 70 points. Especially putting the C there, which can't be overlapped, makes it very tough for player one to block. So, great strategic play there by player two. Uh, and yeah, player one, well, Sank, I don't believe, was a word at this time, right? Wasn't that added? I can't even remember now. Was Sank added in TWL 18 or TWL 15? Well, if Sank is a word, C-I-N-Q, it's best by a mile. If not, player one should honestly probably trade, like, one or two. They trade Q. So, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and assume that Sank was not valid. Uh, but yeah, trading one is fine there. I mean, Denier hits so many bingos, especially with the floating D. Player two plays G, and uh, I think player one missed, right? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything. Yeah, recoined, it doesn't fit, so... Oh, wait, rejoined, though, through the J. Ooh, that, I almost missed that. That's actually, that's interesting. We'll see if player one finds it. They do, nice find, okay. I mean, not a hard word, like, once you know there's something there, but it's never intuitive to look through a J. Player two going to play Yage somewhere, I guess, or Okagey. Oh, wow, really blowing the board open. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't mind it, especially if you don't care about spread. You know, you're down 100 points. you got to make something happen. Player one probably just dits from the D, I would assume. Yep, yeah, just blocking. Player two, typey. That's a nice play. 48. Player one, still up about 80. Maybe Fen through the E and G. Scores pretty well, keeps Snail. If you can get another bingo down, then you're pretty much locking up this game. I don't see a good way to score a lot more, so I would play short here. Oh, I forgot about Scoot. Yeah, I guess it's interesting. I mean, I guess from a win percentage standpoint, yeah, playing over there is probably more logical. Because you should still infer that your opponent has an S from, from that turn way back. Yeah, that's. Uh, I kind of forgot about that. Yeah, I guess you should probably do that. I mean... If spread really mattered, I could actually see an argument for just playing Fen and then trying to bingo with Scoot, but I, I can't fault this player for doing that either. That's very reasonable. Player 2, going to play Changed. Okay. 
Uh, I mean, it does score well and turn over some tiles for the blanks. It does block the board a little bit, which I don't love at this score, but you do at least give yourself a new line for sevens next to the E and the D. So, uh, okay, reasonable enough. Player one, Unveil or Vixen, maybe? Uh, you don't want to play Unlive and FE. That's way too risky. Probably Vixen, maybe, above Rejoin, just to block a little bit. Seems okay. Let's see. Unlive. Oh, you know, that's interesting, because now, by playing a six... They block the B column, too, and keep the X for a score. And I actually like that, because Vixen's a lot more points. But, yeah, very defensive play by player one. Interesting. It's, uh, I mean, it's very defensive, but you are up 100 points and keeping an X. So I think it's reasonable. I like this, but I like the way player ones play in this game a lot. Player two, oil. Okay, I mean, you got to make something happen. So I get it. It's a little desperate. I mean, there's probably was... Or it feels like there should have been probably a slightly better way to open it up and maybe score a couple more points. Like, this is pretty easy to block, but... Uh, yeah, player one now should be able to just play something up there. Through that O. Let's see what they do. Um, or just locks for 29. Yeah, maybe they're going for spread at this point. I mean, you're keeping Paren, P-A-R-E-N, with a great chance of bingo in. I don't, I don't mind that at all. Player two will bingo with Subis or something. Um, there... Yeah, I mean, you've been going with Boyle, it's more points, but, I mean, you're just asking for trouble putting an E next to the triple-triple line, so... Yeah, I mean, you bingo there, look, you're down 57 points. Obviously, player one's going to bingo here, and that's GG, but, like, player two doesn't know that, so... Yeah, player two not completely out of it until player one bingos with... Probably Operant is the safest. Yep, well done. Pronate, definitely a lot more risky. Player one playing a really good game. Player two going to play, I guess, Knit... And yeah, player one draws the blank. They do have the Q, but they'll be able to get rid of it pretty easily. Uh, just like QI above Subis or something. Like, just get rid of the Q. I mean, you could block above Operant, but I think it's more important to get rid of the Q with this score. Yeah, QI is fine. Player two draws the V, plays... Oh, that's a great play, though. Look at that. Unlived, Dev, and Vex. 39 points for the D and the V. Very nice play. Yeah, both players making some pretty good plays this game. Player one... Probably something on the top left. Maybe just WoW looks fine. Yep, 31 points. Player 2, I think, is going to throw in the towel here and just play Oral, probably, it looks like. Laura, yeah, I mean, how many tiles were left there? Oh, there's only one in the bag, I guess? Uh, no, two in the bag. Yeah, 10 unseen. This is a good pool. Yeah, the problem is if you're player two here and you fish, like, even if you hit a bingo, you're just never winning. So, nothing wrong with sort of throwing in the towel there and just blocking. And player one will bingo out with Mobster and Mai, right? Uh, bro, man, okay, Mobster's a couple more, but, I mean, it only matters for spread, so... Not a big deal. Yeah, pretty clean game there, it seemed like, overall. I mean, player one definitely drew a little bit better. They played really well. I mean, no clear mistakes, I don't think, to to speak of, at least nothing that really stands out. Like, there, there's no play they made where I'm confident I would have played something different. So, yeah, well played by player one. Player two, harder to say for sure, obviously, without having full racks. I liked Coot a lot. They, I guess they just never got to use their S until they played Subis, which is kind of crazy. So maybe just some bad luck for player two there. But yeah, this seemed like a high-level game. I'm going to say, I think player one is... Like, probably a pretty high-ranked player. And player two, there was nothing that player two did that indicated to me that they would be weaker. I just think they probably had a tougher game. And that happens a lot. And it's hard to know with these games without having a rack. But I want to say player one is rated 1970. Player two is rated 1925. Let's see. And, okay, interesting. So, I had the right idea with player one. Yeah, 2030. So, a little stronger even than I gave him credit for. Yeah, definitely a, a top player. And player two is a 1774. So, not quite as strong as player one, but still a, a very strong player. And they, they certainly lived up to it. Like I said, it seemed like based on their plays, they most likely just had some had some pretty tough tiles. And, honestly, probably did a pretty good job making the most of them. Just, uh, there's only so much that... That you can really do. And uh, yeah, without knowing the racks, it's hard to say for sure, but it seemed like player two played a pretty good game. Alrighty, let's now move on to our third game, which will be our final one of this video. Player one opening with a pretty good bingo rack here. No sevens. 
So we could see a number of things here. We could see a short play like How, H-A-O. We could see a longer play like Heroin. Both of them are reasonable here. I can kind of live with either. Play one goes with How, so a little bit more defensive, going more for the bingo. So that is totally reasonable. Player two, it looks like we're going to only have partial backs. They'll play Wild. Player one... Yeah, this is the drawback sometimes, guys, to opening with plays like How, is that... You do often bingo, but when you don't, you're kind of stuck with these one pointers that don't go too well together. So yeah, now player one kind of has to kind of has to keep fishing because there isn't really anything better to do. You probably want to just play E N. Yeah, and that's exactly what they do. Player two is going to play feet, I assume. That's a nice play, getting rid of some junk, scoring 35 points. Player one, yes, yeah, still no bingo, I don't think. So uh I guess maybe M A E under feet. Let's see. They go with Mina. Yeah, that's better for sure. Uh, at this point, yeah, that's a good play, you know, just getting rid of more tiles, scoring more points. They've been fishing for too long, you know. Uh, definitely better to unload some more and take the lead. Player two, I guess, erupt from the E is coming down, okay. And, ooh, it'll be interesting to see here if player one plays intermat through the M, which is not a triple-triple. It stops one short of the triple, 80 points, but it is obviously risky if your opponent has an S. Another option is interact through the C and erupt, which is 74. It's six fewer points. Taking a lead and four S's left, you probably want to play interact because it does at least still block the M for the most part. And they do. I like that decision for sure. You know, if you were, maybe if you were still down or if there weren't so many S's, I could see intermat. But yeah, at this point in the game, I totally agree with that. Player two is going to play idiom, get rid of some eyes and score and open. Player one... Uh, what do they have here? Veep or something? Pep? Let's see. Veeps. Yeah, okay. I think that's reasonable. You know, it's the first S of the game. Three S's still left. You're scoring probably a lot more than you can without playing the S. So, you know, 33 feels a little, in general, like not enough to get rid of an S. But you, you got to base getting rid of an S more on how much utility are you getting for the S. Like, how much better is that play relative to the next best option that doesn't use the S? It's not an absolute number. Like, you shouldn't use an S unless you're getting 40 points, right? It's just about how much additional value you're getting for the S. So, very much a reasonable play. Player 2 is going to play exact and be very aggressive, which, you know, I'm fine with, because that takes a, an A as well as an S. It's very, very aggressive. But they are down a bit, and depending on what they had, especially if they kept an A or an S, if they didn't keep an A or an S, it's probably a bit reckless, but if they kept one of those, then I think it's reasonable with this score. And Player 1 now is in a very awkward position because they don't have a hook and it's tough to block because if you play through the T, you're going to kind of give back more. There's a tricky word there of Terran, P-T-E-R-I-N, which scores pretty well. It scores 28 points and at least partially blocks that spot. I think that's what I would do. Could also live with something like Pibal, P-I-B-A-L, or Biplane through the A. Let's see. Go with Pibal. Yeah, that's fine. I would have probably gone with Terran, but you also do give back the N on the bottom, so... Tough position to be in, but player two looks like he's going to use their blank for, what, Joram? Okay, 63. Yeah, I mean, I think that's reasonable. You tie the game. I don't know what else they had, obviously. I assume they didn't miss something for even more. But assuming they, like, if they kept, say, AO or something, right? Like, that's probably a very reasonable play. And player one, uh, is Reeling going to fit or Leering? Uh, no, I don't think. Just let. Yeah, see, I don't love this play because, see, the problem with let is you keep E-G-I-N-R, which is a great leave for bingoing, but most of your bingos with that leave are going to end in I-N-G or E-R, and there's nowhere on this board for a 7 ending in either E-R or I-N-G to play. And without bingoing with that rack, you're not really scoring much. So I would rather actually get rid of more tiles here and go for more scoring tiles, uh, the S's, the blank. So I'm not even sure what, though. That's the problem. Like, there's just no good way. Is there anything through that T? Yeah, I mean, I just feel like let can't be right. It just doesn't fit the position very well at all. I don't really see anything next to the P in, in Pi. Well, it's a very difficult position to play, to be honest, but... Yeah, there's actually very little to do here. Huh. Yeah, maybe let is not that bad just because of the lack of other 
options. I mean, you don't really want to just completely destroy your rack either. Like, you wouldn't want to play green next to the P&I and Pi Bowl and just keep IL. That's just way too, uh, way, way too much to get rid of. So, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a very strange position because I just don't see a good way to get rid of several tiles here. So, yeah, maybe lead is not so bad. I mean, I guess you could still hope your opponent opens something up. It's, it's usually in these kind of positions you don't want to do stuff like that. But I guess here there's just so few options, it's not so bad. Player 2 going to play Berg somewhere, I guess. Grub, okay. Player 1, not a great draw. King, we'll see what they come up with. There's not a whole lot to do here. Kegging? Eh, yeah, see, okay, now I would definitely play Kegging through the G. Because, again, the problem with this, right, is with that leave, you're going for something ending in ING, and it's still not going to play. Now you actually have a good play. You can play kegging through the G, score reasonably well, and burn through more tiles and keep just an R. I would totally do that. You know, the chances of drawing the S or the blank or, or maybe the Z, depending on how the board develops, is just much more important. You're just, you're not going to, even if you hit like gearing or something, or naggy or like, it's just not going to play. So there's really no point. Yeah, this is, I think, definitely a mistake. The last turn, like I said, I just couldn't really find anything better, so I can kind of live with it. But yeah, I, I think this is a mistake. Um, player two, Urari. Wow, that is brazen with five O's left for Urari. That takes a front O. Especially if they're one tile fish, that is really brazen. I mean, they're going to get away with it because player one doesn't have an O or a C for Urari, but there are no C's left. I mean, that just doesn't feel like it could have been right, but I don't know. I guess maybe if they if they have an O? I feel like if, if you have an O, you should just play the O, though, with so many left. Wow, I, I'd be dying to know what player two had. That, that seems way too brazen to me at this score, but I don't want to jump to too much of a judgment. Yeah, because now we've seen player two make some big gambles here, exact in Urari, and it's sort of paying off for them. Because, yeah, now... And see, this is the problem with Ken. Now player one just doesn't really have anything. I, you, I, I'd I love to see Herring through the Arkham down. You need to turn over some tiles. Okay, good. Yeah, I think player one now realized that there's just no point to fish again, and you need points, and now you need turnovers for an O. Player 2 going to play low G, it looks like. And yeah, okay, I mean, you got the Q, but you also got the blank. So this, this is good for player 1. This is why you go for that turnover. And yeah, I mean, getting rid of this Q is not going to be trivial by any means. Uh, yeah, I mean, how do you get rid of this Q, actually? Do you get rid of the Q? You might just have to play EW above the EH uh, or the H and the E in Herring. I don't see any other way. Yeah, I think you have to do that. You need to score. There's still three S's left and stuff, so you could at least draw like Souk maybe somewhere. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kava. Okay, yeah, player one. How many tiles are left? 15, so you can still trade. Yeah, you probably want to trade here and just sort of go for a bingo. I mean, I just don't see anything worth playing. You can't get rid of this Q without using the blank. There's nothing good enough to justify burning the blank. Yeah, I'm trading down to E blank here if this is me. Let's see. Uh... Hmm, I don't know. E-E-O-G is a leave? I don't know, guys. I mean... I get wanting to get rid of the Q and not wanting to score zero in a tie game, but it just doesn't feel right. I mean, keeping EEOG blowing up your rack with three more O's left, there's so many ways you can still get outscored with three S's and a Z unseen. Like, I really want to keep my blank and try to bingo for 70 and take a more commanding lead with a better leave, hopefully. I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like it. I mean, I could be wrong, but I, I don't think this is correct. Because, yeah, now player two is going to play Azo. And, what, I mean, that's a very good draw for player one there, playing an S. So, probably, I think Gone and Azon, probably, because there's no A's for a Gone. Let's see. Okay. And, oh, that's it. Oh, I, I uh, guess player one emptied. And player one has all three S's. Yeah, I mean, that's just absurdly lucky. Wow. Yeah, and player two is certainly lost here. Player one has E F O S S S. I mean, you can play with Fe or Few. You can play with Kavas. Yeah, this is lost. Okay, it has to be lost. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the best end game is here. I'm not going to waste a ton of time trying to figure it out. Uh, player one Fiat's okay. Uh, now I guess uh, 
Nudie and Ego? Okay. So, all right, the game ends low score in game 361, 345. Interesting game here. Um, I don't get top player vibes because. I mean, player two took some really big risks, exact and Urari, and I just didn't feel like at either point was such a bold play warranted. Like, they, they were at a slight disadvantage, but they both of those plays took hooks that, I mean, were pretty likely for player one to have. It just didn't quite feel necessary. And again, without knowing the full rack, it's hard to say for sure, but my instinct tells me those were not good plays. And then... Player 1 honestly played a pretty good game. I really did not like Ken at all. I thought that, like, I, di I didn't like Lit, but at the same time, I just, like, couldn't really find the play I liked better, so I don't want to criticize it too much. Ken should definitely have been kegging at that position and point in the game. And I really just didn't like Kot. I mean, it's harder to know for sure, but... If player one didn't draw all those S's, they would probably not have had this good an outcome. I mean, they drew all three S's and they still only won by 16. Like, they got very lucky at the end. So, I don't know. I mean, they they made a lot of good plays, though, too. So, I'm going to say, I think these players are probably similarly skilled. I'll say they're both around, I think they're both around 1800s, give or take. Maybe a little weaker. Yeah, you know what? No, I'm going to say 1770s. All right, final answer. They're both 1770. Let's, uh, let's see. Um, wow, great guess. Okay. Yeah, so either this or 1800 would have been a good guess. Yep, so player one was 1759, player two, 1823. Yep, that was, um, you know, it's funny. I feel like this is the range, like the sort of 1800 range. That's the easiest to, to guess in a sense because, like, sometimes, you know, it's easy to see if someone played like a top player, but sometimes, you know, people who aren't top players can have really clean games, so that can be a little tricky. But, like, 17, 1800s, will consistently play pretty good Scrabble, but also make a couple of mistakes, whether word knowledge or strategical mistakes, that I'm able to perceive pretty easily as I'm going through the game. So, like, it's usually pretty easy for me to sense. Like, they're not missing tons of bingos and making tons of board vision mistakes. So they're, you know, a, probably an expert and, a, you know, pretty solid player, but they're not quite there in terms of the strategical knowledge. Like, say, that Ken versus Kegging play that a top player would have, knowing that, Turnover is much more important than fishing. So, yeah, it's interesting. Like, I feel like most of the ones I get correct are when the players are around 1,800, which is just a uh, kind of an inter interesting fact. I don't know. I wonder if that's the same in the chess guess the Elos that uh, Gotham Chess does. If anybody's a big Gotham Chess fan and uh, has a sense of what rating range he gets right the most, I'd be curious to know because I've done enough of these. I'm really getting the sense that this is the range where I tend to guess the best. But um, anyway, just a, a sort of interesting fact I've noted. But uh, that's going to do it for this one, guys. So I hope you... Enjoy. Definitely some interesting games there. Some uh, some good guessing here. Some okay guessing in game two, and some horrible guessing in game one. I still can't believe that uh, game one. I guess like seventeen or eighteen hundred, and it was eleven hundred. That was crazy. But uh, yeah, never a dull moment with Scrabble gets the Elo. So once again, uh, glad it's back. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you want to see more of these. I always appreciate your feedback and uh, and your support. So thanks again, and I'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye bye.